what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel where we have this question on the board which says find the value of x from this right angle triangle well if this is a right angle triangle which is true because we have a right angle here that means this side should be the hypotenuse because it is a side facing the right angle so let's represent that by h and we can call this as the opposite and call this as the adjacent well it doesn't matter their position we can also have here to be the adjacent and here to be the opposite depending on which angle we are considering now since it is a right angle triangle we're going to be applying what we call the pythagoras theorem pythagoras theorem which we are familiar with which says that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the opposite and the adjacent this is a very simple theorem that we can do so let's substitute our values given to us from the diagram well our hypotenuse is x cubed so I'm going to be putting x cubed here and I'll be squaring that according to Pythagoras equal to the opposite is x so I'm going to be putting x here and I'll also square that according to Pythagoras plus a which is the adjacent and that we have as x squared so x squared and I'm also going to square that now this can become x to the power of 6 because from indices the power multiply so 3 times 2 I'm going to be having 6 equal to x squared plus now remember powers multiply so 2 times 2 I'm going to be having 4 so this becomes x to power 4 now let's move everything to one side for example let's move everything to the left hand side so I'll be having x to the power of 6 minus x to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 2 equal to 0 now you notice that x squared is common so we can factor that out so x squared now what is going to be remaining here I'm going to be having x to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 2 minus 1 so that is it now from here we have two cases x is equal to 0 or x to the power 4 minus x to the power 2 minus 1 is equal to zero but we can't have x to be zero because x must be greater than one since this is a right angle triangle so x is greater than one so i'm going to be rejecting this case so let's focus on this other one this equation can also be written as x to the power two raised to the power of two because two times two we give four so it's the same thing minus x to the power two minus one equal to zero so we can therefore say that let's x squared be equal to p because x squared is actually common here so that means wherever i see x squared i'm going to be putting p there so this is x squared so i'm going to be putting p squared minus p minus one equal to zero so this is a quadratic equation that we're going to be solving using the general formula so let's go ahead and solve this real quick all right using the general formula we know that a from here from this quadratic equation is one that's the coefficient of p squared so b is equal to the coefficient of p which is negative one and c is a constant term which is negative one as well so p from the general formula is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divide by 2a so let's go ahead and substitute our values so p is equal to negative b b is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared that means negative 1 squared minus 4 times a a is 1 times c c is negative 1 so let's extend, extend this a little bit all over 2 times a 2 times 1 that's it so p now becomes 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 square is 1 now minus 
4 times 1 times negative 1, I have negative 4. So all over 2 times 1, that's 2. So P becomes 1 plus or minus. The square root of minus times minus gives plus. So 1 plus 4 all over 2. So P becomes 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. Because 1 plus 4 is actually 5 over 2. Two. So this is the value of P. So we have two values of P here. We have P to be equal to 1. Let's take the positive side plus the square root of 5 all over 2. Or P is equal to 1 minus the square root of 5 all over 2. So let's focus on this first value of P. Remember, we said let X squared be equal to P, right? Cool. So let's substitute the value of P here so that we can use that to get the value for X. So X squared equal to the value of P. I'm going to be taking this, which is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. But in order for me to get X, that means to cancel off this square, I need to take the square root of both sides. So let's go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So taking the square root of both sides, so the square root of x squared is equal to, remember I'll be having plus or minus on the right, the square root of 1 plus the root 5 all over 2. Now notice that the square and the square root will cancel off, so leaving behind x equal to, now I have two terms here, I have the positive which is the square root of 1 plus the square root of 2 all over, square root of 5 rather, all over 2 or the negative, the square root of 1, plus the square root of 5, all over 2. But x cannot be negative. Remember, this is a right-angled triangle. So, since x cannot be negative, that means this will be rejected. So, the one we're going to be accepting is this, which is x is equal to the square root of the golden ratio. Because this is actually a golden ratio. So now let's go ahead and see the other value of P. Remember that the other value of P we got, let me show you real quick. Alright, so this is the other value of P that we have. Notice that this value of P is negative. And when I put it here, I'm going to be having a complex value. But remember, we are only focused on real value of X, not complex value of X. So the only answer we have is this. This is the only answer that we've got for x. And there you have it. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.